13 ABC. Now, Conklin and Company continues with Take 3, commentary and analysis from our panel of political contributors. Welcome back, everyone. Take 3 now with Skyler Meadows and Ignacio Messina. I haven't had Take 3 for a couple of weeks. We're getting closer to this May 6th special election. Uh, and Ignacio, let's start with the Board of Elections. Uh, you covered this uh, series of meetings from this Transparency Committee, John Husted's uh, appointed Transparency Committee. And there were some uh, changes made this week by the Board of Elections looking ahead to May 6th. Uh, where are we going with this? Well, I, I stepped in for Tom Troy, who's on vacation, mm -hmm. to cover the Board of Elections. And there was a meeting earlier last week where they spent nine hours being grilled by this, this Secretary of State appointed committee. Basically, it came down to one of the biggest problems, that there are personality conflicts among the board members, between them and the staff. And so they basically told them to get their act together. Then later in the week, it was a Thursday, they had another meeting where there were personality conflicts and the staff were being another grilled. Another seven hours? Or? No, this was a regular meeting. It was oh, the two, shorter. Two, okay. two or three hours. Yeah. And then they wound up firing someone and there were allegations of retributions by you know, member John Stainbrook to the deputy director, Dan. So it, it seemed like more of the same, even though the Secretary of State's committee said, get your act together. Mm. Dan DeAngelis. Yes. Uh, it, 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 Skyler, uh, the question I have is, through all this, this committee says, yeah, there is some dysfunction here. There are personality conflicts. That's not really any great surprise. But what can John Husted legally do when this committee comes back to him and says, yeah, there, this, 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 this? Mm. What's the recourse? You know, I researched this because I wanted to know, too. One thing that stood, stood out in my mind, as Ignacio mentioned, is the same thing, different day, different committee. And even down to the point of having Jim Ruvalo, who was on the board for six weeks, <laughs> probably had enough, and then he's back on the Transparency Committee. We're recycling. Uh, the board lacks diversity. We already know that. So there are the issues that always always come into play. So what can John Houston do as the mm -hmm. Secretary of State? He can wipe out the whole office if he chooses to. Uh, one thing that needs to be done though immediately is to restore the integrity of the office. The appearance is that it's not to be trusted. Well and that's what this is all about. Looking forward to May 6th. Can the board under new leadership, Gina Cazala, Dan DeAngelis, uh, operate, run a successful, smooth, election in just over two weeks. Well, all the officials say they're ready for this election, which is already going on with the early vote center. Right, correct. I think close to 300 people had voted as of Thursday morning. So they are, they say they are ready, and Skyler's right. You know, the Secretary of State could wipe this whole board out, but we should say that on the board now is Ron Rothenbuehl, the Democratic chairman, right. and John Steinberg, the Republican chairman. They two, those two men will be uh, responsible to picking the new board should it be wiped out. So it will be up to them to pick the new board. And John Steinberg has said, you know, I will put the person I want in and Ron will could, could do the same. So basically are you saying that this may perpetuate the same issues then? Because they're just going to give it to their successor and you're not going to pick anybody that's the antithesis of them, are they? Well, I'm not going to make that that statement, but you know, if you want to say that, that's if what I want to say. That, that, it Rothen seems. Rothenbuehler and Steinbrook, <laughs> are they in jeopardy? Can Husted take action sure. the secretary yeah, absolutely. Them. The secretary of the state told uh, the blade not long ago that everything was on the table absolutely absolutely and it, we have to restore integrity that has to be restored and is there not one more meeting with this transparency committee there will be a meeting you know? next there will be a meeting this week so they'll, they'll meet again. I'm sure they'll go over some of the same issues. And it's funny, they've had two marathon long meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the third meeting will be the same. It'll be between six and 10 hours and they'll go over some of the same issues that they've had over the last several years. Mm -hmm. My right. hope is that in this meeting that the disdain will be put to the side. You can only chastise people so much. We get it. Let's right. let's you know get moving on this. And also, I was um, a little sad to see that the recommendations would not be presented until after the election because if we need sweeping change impacted, it should have been done during or you know right around mm -hmm. the election. Well, and, and that is somewhat surprising. But but when you take a look at and and not surprising in and of itself, but that there, there's no way they can come back with a report in what, a week's time? That's true, and elections are complicated. As, you know, as easy as it seems that you go and vote, elections are complicated, and part of the trouble with cha making such a drastic change now would be you really jeopardize the election security. That's a thought, and also the move. We had to think about the early vote center how, moving. How has the move gone um, at, to this early voting center? Are there reviews in on whether this, this place works? Will it be a good permanent home for the Board of Elections? One of the things this Transparency Committee was looking at whether the machines were properly tested before voting started. There was a lot of contradiction. Staff members told this committee that that was patently false, that they were not tested. They were tested. 
voting has gone smoothly, and, and we have not heard any problems with the test with the voting so far. Uh, we hope that uh, that continues uh, and it, it runs unabated up to May 6th. And on May 6th, continuing to vote, people who, who vote on Election Day, uh, kind of the passe thing to do the, <laughs> these days is actually go to the polls on Election Day uh, and vote, especially in a primary or a special election. Uh, this race for City Council District 2, mm -hmm. uh, four candidates, a crowded race. Uh, is this a pick 'em race at this point, Skyler? I don't know what you really want to call it. Like you said, we're challenged from a Board of Elections perspective, and you see the same old thing being played out in the field. The labor candidates being supported by labor. Uh, there are people that are partisan that want to step up, and other folks that are small business with special interests and special backing stepping up. So I think it's all about turnout. Okay. Well, you mentioned labor. Matt Cherry has labor backing. Marsha Hellman has some small business backing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bob Vasquez, Ignacio, has name. Name recognition. I uh, mean, I still think between the top three, it's anybody's race. Matt Cherry's got some name recognition. The, the unions are going to be throwing a lot of money at him. I think they're still a little um, burned over losing Sean Enright as their union person on council. Um, and Marsha Hellman has a following in that area of the city. You know, Republican, small business owner, I should say, I think independent, but has a Republican right, following. Right. Uh, and Joe Salusa says, hey, don't forget about me. Here. Joe Salusa right. running the grassroots campaign, yeah. which, you know, our mayor was famous for doing when he won right. that seat uh, so many years ago, I think, was it six years ago? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, don't count him out as mm -hmm. well. It's an interesting race to follow, for sure. And we'll have uh, Joe Salusa on uh, in just a week or so. So hang in there for that one. We've had all the candidates on. Final, uh, final thoughts here on Mike Collins. D. Michael Collins, first 100 days. Last Saturday, the 100th day in office as mayor of mm -hmm. Toledo. Skyler, you start. Uh, I think he's still adjusting, he and his administration, to the challenges of going from being the naysayer to the mayor. That right, mm -hmm. naysayer mayor, but I mean, I, th I think there's still an adjustment. 100 yeah. days is not a lot. I mean, sure, he's moving from a role where he was the city's detective to now he's the city's mayor. And I think in the first 100 days, he had a lot of adversities. He had a lot of yes. problems that came up. Of course, up. the firefighter. I mean, sure, the firefighter more, tragedy, yeah. the two, two, two firefighters who died here was, mm -hmm. you know, the most you know, tragic. And then the harsh winter. So he had a lot of issues that he had to resolve. And a lot of people said he did a good job responding. Even Jack Ford said, you know, he has done everything as sort of an A-plus rating for everything that's been thrown at him. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that he is making sure of is that he's going to be an advocate as far as he, you know, sees for the people, like stepping in about this whole notion of the airport being uh, held and owned privately and saying something, whether it comes true or not. At least he's standing up as an advocate and about business. Sure, he stepped in and slammed the door shut on that. He stepped in and got some money for homeless shelters. Um, one thing he took criti uh, criticism for was for these two and a half percent raises for the city's largest unions. Right. But that was right. going. And to he was a union president, yep. so people yep. have said, "Does that paint the picture so far? What's to come with our bigger negotiations with police and fire down the line?" All right, uh, that's mm -hmm. the first 100 days. Ignacio Scala, thanks very much. Have a, a great rest of this uh, Sunday. Happy Easter to you and to everyone out there, everybody. We'll see you next week on Con Clinic Company. Take care.